it, guys. We made it. <laughs> it was a long drive. We ended up making several stops, so that's the way we, reason we took a car. So now made it. I'm down in Destin. Uh, I love this beach down here. I usually go to over to Orange Beach, Alabama, but my wife found a decently priced uh, place, and it's I mean, it's gorgeous. Huge pools. Um, there's a golf course here. I'm kicking myself because I forgot my golf clubs. And I'm terrible at golf, but I want to play at one of these resorts because, I mean, they're, they're gorgeous. And uh, she's asleep right now. I tried to go over to the gym that's at the place. That's one thing I didn't uh, take a look at before coming here because, I'm not kidding when I say I think I have a closet bigger than it, and for some reason four people still thought they could work out in there. Uh, one Bowflex machine and two treadmills. So. We're just going to go on a quick little walk instead. This is something that's starting to pick up in the Midwest too, but the odd utility of golf carts, man. They just use them everywhere. I mean, that thing has like six seats, nine seats, I don't even know. And I'm starting to see them more and more. We have a big golf car distributor, and I actually see some of his carts here because they have his logo on it, which is hilarious. I'm 13 hours away, and he's selling golf carts up here, down here, down here. That's pretty impressive. I wish I had a business that was doing stuff at, like wide and far like that, but maybe I need a golf cart. I have a trouble buying anything that can't pull my trailers. That's all I care about when I'm buying a vehicle. It's like, can I pull my trailers? What's the fuel mileage on that horsepower and torque? Hmm. Do a really funny video of towing my stuff with a golf cart though. I absolutely love what this beach looks like. Seriously, if you've never been to a beach that's just absolutely white sandy, it's so, I mean, it's like stepping on flour. It's incredible. And then, this is a pretty busy beach, actually. I've been to other parts where there's definitely less people, but it is really weird to see, like, three rows of rentable chairs. Man, that's a business to be in. And the water is just gorgeous. One thing I will say is, uh, during the season though, there's certain seasons that you definitely have like seaweed. There's quite a bit out here But I mean, it's not horrible. It's definitely uh, Tolerable to say the least and it's Not gonna keep me out of the ocean. I'll say that Let's get to the real point here though. I am a Little nervous being here. Just to be honest. This is the first time I've been away from my business entirely for about a week and I have to let somebody else basically run it. And I mean the whole time. And I'm not there to supervise it. I'm supervising it via this cellular device. So, guys, if you cannot run your business, especially a dumpster business, from your cell phone, reevaluate. That's all I'll say. I can do everything from this cell phone except for essentially drive the truck to drop off the dumpster and drive the truck to dump the dumpster at the dump. That's why I pay a driver for that part. And guys, I'm not, not that big yet. I'm not like, oh, I'm never getting back in the truck. I get in the truck uh, several times per week, nonstop actually. Uh, but a couple days a week, I really leave it to my driver, Keegan, who's killing it because he can drive all day and then I can do bookkeeping, look for other jobs, work on other like equipment, maintenance, stuff like that while he's driving the truck. So what I very much have gotten used to is letting him do that on like two to three days of the week. And then I drive the rest. And I work a lot on Saturdays too. So, but this week I'm not there at all. And everybody calls my phone for anything. So that's the, that's the thing. Everybody can call my phone, talk to me about a dumpster. It takes, you know, five minutes out of my vacation every time. And then I just direct them to my website. I say, go ahead and book it online. You know, you can book this. You know, you can tell me exactly what you want. There's availability still. And then from there, I forward that invitation, that request to Keegan, and he drives. So my business isn't on hold. This is the serious, like, growth point from side hustle to business when it comes to, you know, dumpster rentals, uh, mowing, uh, in, anything else. I mean, really anything. Anything that you started and you just want to say, hey, maybe, you know, this will get bigger. This is that growth period because if you're able to run it, and not be there sipping mimosas on the beach you know the dream vacation kind of thing i'm not i'm not there yet but you can definitely like sit back enjoy some time this is my first vacation with my wife in a while 
where I like completely separated from my business and didn't worry about it. Um, and I'm not completely separated. I still take phone calls. I still, you know, follow up with Keegan, make sure everything's going all right, but it's very doable. I mean, it's incredibly doable, but you have to be able to will you have to be willing to let go and you have to find that help. The scalability of my business right now is a lot better because I'm allowing somebody to help me because now I'm going to get another trailer. I have the other truck, uh, the backup truck, and we can run two sets of dumpsters all day long. If we have to be done half as early and then work on other stuff to actually grow the business. So there's all, there's all kinds of things we could talk about in terms of growth, but it is possible. The cell phone, the cell phone, make sure your cell phone can do everything for your business as except for, you know, the crucial parts or the monotonous parts that you can pay somebody else to do. Like I said, all my invitations come to this cell phone, all my spreadsheets, I can look at on Google spreadsheets and I can see, I could even do bookkeeping if I wanted to here, you know, for a couple hours, I'm not going to, I'm going to enjoy the beach, but you can, you can take care of all of that on here. Uh, the invitations, if somebody can't book a reservation with you without calling you, uh, for whatever service you're offering, I would really look into it or just like an inquiry form. I, you know, something that somebody can like fill out online so you get an email notification so that you're not missing those. You know, if you get a phone call, somehow they might come across that and you still can get that business. It's very important. But like I said, we're running the business from literally 13 hours away right now. Um, this is going to be a record month again. Uh, at least for my dumpsters and it wouldn't happen if for an entire week I was just calling it quits putting a voicemail uh, on my phone that said oh sorry you know we're taking a one week vacation uh, we'll get you a dumpster when we get back you can't do that when you're trying to like grow a full-time business you can you know if there's some issues in your drivers part-time you can always say oh you know uh, we're not running dumpsters on this day, but we can get you this on this day. Uh, that way you're at least not missing all your opportunities. So really think about it when you're uh, trying to grow that business. What can I do to keep this thing running when I am not there? Man, I need to get my business into other things. If you haven't noticed, if I get rented, I'm interested in it. So houses, skidsters, large equipment, dumpsters. <sighs> Rentals are just... It's just awesome money. Love it. I mean, it's just easy to do. You own it. You accept responsibility for it. And then you rent it out to everybody. It's the most passive, non-passive thing you can do to make a return, in my opinion, outside of being really good at the stock market, which, let's be honest, is just gambling. So one thing I couldn't help doing today was looking for these bad boys. I found one of these tiny ones on accident um, in a wake and I couldn't believe I found it because they move so quickly. And I was like, holy cow, that's shark tooth. And then I just started looking everywhere for them. And yeah, I'm kind of mad at uh, Angela because she put some of them in her bag and they smashed, but we'll fight about that later. And uh, I mean, that one's pretty cool though. That's a really big one. I mean, big for what I found so far, but uh, yeah, now I'm obsessing. I can't help it. Uh, all I want to do is find these because there's not a lot of shells and I like to go out really far into the water and find shells, but now I found a shark tooth. So I'm like, well, I want to find more of those. One guy here was talking about how somebody uh, finds one every day because he visits here all the time. Pretty easy to find, but they move really quick in the wake. So now I'm obsessing a little bit because I had only had ever seen these in the gift shop. So I'm like, oh, I want to keep finding them. And uh, he was talking about how some guy pulled out one that was like, pretty historic looking, but he looks every day for them. And I don't know if he just got lucky recently, but now I know those are out there. And I'm like, I want to find them biggest shark tooth ever and my wife is on the beach reading her book like where'd my little you know husband go and here I am out there with a little strainer straining through the sand I can't help it like literally I'm like 30 years old and the place that uh, left us all the stuff to go out to the beach like they left us the chairs and everything and here I am out there with those, my little my strainer going through the sand trying to find shark teeth it's so bad that earlier today, this little kid walked up to me and said, could I have that back? And he kept pointing at this thing. And I'm like, it's mine. No, no, you can't. And his dad had to be like, hey, that's his. Yours is right there. I was like, yeah, you can't have my strainer. I'm five at heart.
Daddy's gotta get himself some of that quality brand whiskey. I mean, cheap stuff. Midwest favorite. Can I find some of that lotion for the pregnant woman who stayed out in the sun too long? <laughs> Just like that, found another one. Freaking obsessed with these things. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but. Just give them to my little brother, he loves sharks. All right, folks, this is how false information is spread. These are not shark teeth. These are actually sand dollar doves. So the guy on the beach who told me these were shark teeth clearly didn't know what shark teeth were, and I believed him because I'm not from here. So after a little bit of research, I was like, wait a second, this definitely is actually a sand dollar dove is what they call them. It's when a sand dollar falls apart, this is what's kind of left behind. So, don't believe everything somebody tells you, especially me. All right, so perfect example. Today I had somebody call about a dumpster and um, I had it dropped off. But before that, I had a call about one getting picked up early. So what I had Keegan do was he went and picked up the dumpster. He emptied it. He sent me the invoice for the uh, dump charge. I then followed up with the customer because they had a high dump price. So I ended up following up with them, sent them a request via Square to get that paid for. Uh, and then in the meantime, I had somebody reserve a dumpster. I then forwarded that request to Keegan and basically told him to drop that same dumpster that he just emptied off to a new location. So I did it all for my phone. We got a dumpster emptied, we got a customer to pay the tonnage overage, and we dropped off a new dumpster to a new customer all in a day's work. So make sure you can work from your phone and hire employees. That's pretty much just this video. These little guys are freaking everywhere. And they're so fast. Going just like that. In my most DJ Khaled voice, another one. All right, so I'm gonna meet Angela down at the beach. Everyone, thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, follow, and just keep growing that business. Keep putting all that effort into uh, getting the right employees in, getting uh, the right processes. That's really what I'm here to talk about is you need to have processes in place to run your business when you're not home to run your business. You need pe people you trust to be your backup or your full-time employee, and you need to be able to help them run efficiently. If you want your business to run efficiently, you need your employees to run efficiently. So if you're not, if you need a computer, you need a phone, you need a, you know, uh, Wi-Fi you need, whatever it is, make sure you're able to access it at any time if you're trying to run a business and be part of the operator. Unless you just want to hire somebody to do that part too, um, good luck. But small business owners, there's ways to do this where you're not completely married to your business all the time. It's not practical to do and it will really stunt your growth. So keep grinding everybody, like, subscribe, follow, and Shoot me some ideas for some more content. Have a good one.